Hi everybody, it's Dr. Dan from BME 303L, and I'm gonna make a video where I show you how I would solve this first MATLAB practice quiz. And so I gave this uh, quiz several years ago, so I haven't looked at it since then, so hopefully I get all the answers right. Okay, so the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze data from Usain Bolt running his world record 100 meter dash time. Uh, it's stored in the CSV file, so we're gonna have to download this file. I can just click on it, it'll download. I'll go ahead and look at the file just to show you in Excel, it's a CSV, so it'll load in Excel. Uh, the format is, right, it has distance in the first column. So this was measured at fixed distances. They measured the time in seconds in the second column. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close that. The trick here is now, when we do it in MATLAB, in order to load the file, we have to, it's just the easiest if you put it into your current working directory, which is my documents MATLAB. So I'm gonna go back to my downloads, which is probably where it is. Yeah, and there's Usain Bolt, well, Copy and paste that to Documents MATLAB. Okay, so there's my CSV file that I need to run. And so let's go ahead back to the quiz and uh, we'll take and see what we have to do. Okay, so write a script to load the data in the MATLAB file using CSV read function. Uh, make a plot of distance on the Y axis and time on the x-axis. Okay, be sure to give the plot a title and axis labels and then save as a PNG or JPEG so we can upload it. Okay, so let's go to MATLAB. We know we're gonna make a script. The instructions told me to make a script. So we wanna load the file um, using the CSV read function. Um, by now, this is MATLAB 2019. Um, we, the CSV read is sort of deprecated and so we use read table from now on, but I'll go ahead and use CSV read um, for this file. So, you know, I can just say data equals CSV read, right, and then the file name. Okay, and the one thing that we know that this won't work because uh, it's going to try to convert that first uh, row, which has titles, into numbers, and so we would get an error. Uh, you could, we could run this if we want. I'll go ahead and save the, this as uh, MATLAB. We'll just call it a quiz1.m. Okay, so if I run this, right, it tells me something trouble reading numeric field, row number, field number one, right? So we know we have to skip the first row. So the way to do that in CSV read is to give it comma one, which means skips number of rows to read. So now I'll save it and run, okay? And our data is what we expect it to be. It's the distance in the first column and time in the second column. So I don't need to see that anymore. So I put the um, semicolon at the end. And now I can assign like the individual variables here. So I can say dist, distance equals data, right? And if you remember, um, if we, we, it's row comma columns, we want all rows, so that's, I can just put a colon, and the distance is first column, so I can put uh, comma one, okay? Uh, then the time is the second one, right? So it's colon comma two. So it says all rows, second column. So those are distance and times. Again, I can save, I'm gonna run to check things out, right? And over here, I can look at distance, it tells me, okay, so I know that's good. I can look at time. The other thing you could do is type in here. I could type in dist and it tells us, okay, we have the correct distance. So I know things are working so far. So now the quiz wanted me to plot this. Uh, it wanted to make sure like you would normally see the time on the x-axis. So we're gonna plot time on the x-axis. So I can say plot um, x comma y, so time comma distance. Right, and the problem also asked me to go ahead and be sure to give the plot a title and axis labels. And so we can do that. X label time is in seconds. Y label distance in meters. And then title
we give it a title. Save that, I'm gonna run it. Okay, and we get our plot, which has all the things we asked for, right? Time on the x-axis, distance on the y-axis, and a title on there. Okay, so now I can save this, uh, save as, and we don't wanna save it as a .fig file. As I said, I wanna do a PNG or a JPEG, so I'll just do a JPEG. Um, Save that. If you wanted to check if it's any good, right? I can open up this in just my file explorer. Look at the picture. Okay, it's there. I'm good. I should submit this now to the quiz. So you must use at least one function in MATLAB to accomplish the following. Calculate Usain Bolt's average velocity and average acceleration over each 10 meter segment. Remembering that velocity is the derivative of position and acceleration is derivative of velocity. And then make a plot of velocity as a function of time. Be sure to give the plot, okay? So we can do that. And we have to use one function to do this, at least one function. So I'm going to go ahead and think about that. So for our uh, for our velocity, right, it's just a derivative of distance with respect to time. Then for the acceleration, it's a derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we could actually, it's just a derivative function. So I can just do that as my function. And so that's what I would probably do. So I'm gonna say new script, okay, and you guys might or might not remember, but we start with the word function. Then we have outputs equals function name. And then inputs in parentheses is basically the, that's basically the format of a function. So my function name, I'm going to just call deriv. Um, inputs, I'm going to have just x and y. And the output is just going to be dy dx. Uh, so that's the basic outlay of my function here. So now I need to save this, right? And knows it's got to be the same name as the function name. So I have it saved as deriv.m, and it's a function. It recognizes it. So we want to calculate the velocity um, from our uh, time and position. Comments are good in here. So I'm going to add some comments, right? Okay, so we kind of set things up with comments just to help out. So we know that you know velocity is going to be that derivative function, and we're going to pass in x and y. And so our x in this case is our distance. Okay, our y, or sorry, our x is our time, right? Uh, the y is our distance because we're going to return dy dx. We want the derivative of distance with respect to time. And then really, I mean, plotting this is very easy, right? It's just the same commands. If we want a new plot, we can use the figure. Um, instead of distance there, we're gonna do velocity. And instead of distance there, and that's gonna be meters per second. Okay, so that's kind of working right now, except we don't have this actually doing anything. Okay, so now we need to just, how do we calculate the derivative, right? We know that the derivative is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so we have what x is, we have what y is, um, so we wanna calculate the change. And so when we're thinking about this, um, we also wanna think about, okay, if we have an x, right, that has 10 points, let's say, we can only calculate the derivative for the last nine of those points, right? We cannot give it a, a derivative for that first point. So we got to decide what we're going to do with that. Um, one thing you could always do is just set that first point equal to zero. Um, so we can start there. Uh, you know, that may or may not work depending on what you're doing, but that's what I'm going to do for here. Obviously, for this particular case, um, when he's starting the race, his velocity and acceleration are zero because he hasn't moved. So I can start off with dy dx equals zero. 
right? And now we just want to loop through uh, the, the values in order to calculate dy dx. So for i equals, we're going to start with then 2 because we're not going to start with the first value. We're going to start with the second value. Um, so we can subtract it from the first value. And I got to be honest, I don't remember if it's length of x. Yes, so length is the, sometimes it's just len, so I was just checking that. Okay, so we're going to do a for loop to loop through all the values. And we say dy dx of i is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So it's very simple, right? It's just y of i minus y of i minus 1. And we're going to divide it by x of i minus x of i minus 1. OK, so we're taking, I'm just leaving some spaces in here to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, and I'll put a semicolon. So when i is 2, we're taking y of 2, which is our second value of, you know, in this case, distance. And we're subtracting off y of i minus 1. So if i is 2, that means y is 1, which is our initial value. Right? So this is a, dis a, a change in the distance over that from 2 to 1, from i equals 2 to 1. And the same thing here. This is change in time, right, as i goes from 2, when i is 2 to the first point. Okay, so I really feel like this is all we need in this function. This is calculating the derivative. It's setting the first one to 0 and then calculating the derivative for the rest. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and run our quiz. Okay, and we get a couple plots that come up over on my other screen over here, so I'll bring them on. Okay, so this is the old one we had before, and now we have our velocity plot, um, which is our change um, in the distance, and that looks, I mean, fairly good. Uh, you can see the this looks pretty constant up here, and so the change here is pretty constant, so that makes, that makes some sense. Okay, so now I need to save this one. Again, I'll save it as a JPEG, call this velocity, V time. Okay, and now we can go back to the practice quiz, choose a file, velocity V time. Here we go. Now make a plot of acceleration as a function of time. Okay, but really it's just the same thing now, we're doing it again, right? I'm just gonna copy and paste all this again. Okay, and so now we're going to make acceleration as derivative of time um, and the velocity. Okay, and we want to plot time versus acceleration. Again, we're just going to change these labels, meters per second squared. Okay, so I'll save that and run this, and really it should just now produce three plots for us. some in here in my other figure. Okay, I may not have closed that before. That's why it's called figure one. But these are the three plots we uh, are produced. Here's position, which we've seen before, velocity, which we've seen before. Now acceleration, which again makes sense where this starts flattening out. You have about zero acceleration right at the end, uh, which is why Usain Bolt is so fast. He doesn't decelerate at the end. Um, and so that's, that's pretty good. So we're going to file and save this as. So, okay, so we're, we're doing pretty, pretty good right now. We got our three plots made, uploaded. Okay, what's Usain Bolt's maximum velocity? So we can use the max function for that. So just say max of velocity. And this is one of those things I probably just won't put a, a semicolon after so I can see what it does. I, I'm also going to close all these pictures because they're going to open up again. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and see what else. Okay, then we have a bonus question. Use MATLAB to calculate the distance at which his maximum acceleration is achieved. Okay, interesting. So I will go ahead and answer the velocity question first, and then we'll talk about this. So let's run this again. Okay, our max velocity 
is just that 12.3457. I'll copy and paste it to Matt, uh, to the Canvas quiz. And now we're going to calculate the distance at what is max acceleration was achieved. Okay, so if we look at the plot, okay, obviously the max acceleration is achieved at x value of right 2.88 seconds, right? Okay, so we know what we're looking for. We're looking for the um, distance at 2.88 seconds. Okay, when you're thinking about that, we're looking for something at a certain point. We really want to find the index where this is max. Okay, and there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Okay, so I found my max acceleration. So now we need to find out what the index of that max acceleration is so we can then correlate that back, right, to the position. Okay, so if we look at the acceleration, we can see that that is at our answer should be i of three, right? That's the answer we're looking for, but we got to use MATLAB to solve for that, right? So let's go ahead and we'll say max excel. We'll just set that like that. And now we're just going to do like a for loop. We want to find when the acceleration equals that max acceleration. That's pretty easy. For i equals one to length of excel. And so I'm going to just have a max i. So I'll set it to negative 1, right? So that way, if we get out of this for loop and the max i is equal to negative 1, that means the for loop didn't work. And that's a good hint to us that it didn't work, OK? So that's why I set it to a number that it can't possibly be. OK, so let's go ahead. Sorry, it's mad that I don't have that on there. And we'll say, so we're going to loop through all values, and we're going to say if the acceleration of i is equal to max acceleration. I forget how this works on MATLAB, sorry. OK, if that is true, like in other words, we find that our current acceleration equals max acceleration, we want to go ahead and set max i equals i. OK, so I'm going to go down here. And just to make sure it works before I do anything else, I'm going to just print out what x max i is, right? So let's go ahead and save this, run. OK, so I forget how to do these sometimes. It's totally fine. So it's saying like you're trying to assign a variable in, it, in an if function. Really, we want to compare for equality, so you have to use a double equal sign. And that, some programming languages are different, so I'm never perfect in this. You just wait till you get the error, then you fix it. Um, but yeah, so I want to compare, does the current acceleration equal max acceleration? So I have to use a double equal sign to do that, because otherwise it thinks I'm trying to set something. So let's go ahead and save that, run. OK, and so my answer for max velocity is that max i is 3, which is what we expected it to be. So that's working very well. So now if I just want to know the distance at the max acceleration, it's very simple. OK, so I just want to report what the distance of max acceleration is. I run, OK, and I get the answer is 20. OK, so now I can go back to my MATLAB quiz, calculate the distance, yep, 20. OK, now it just wants me to upload my MATLAB script and my MATLAB function, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Quiz 1 is my script. Choose a file. Derivative is my function. Uh, but right now, it looks like we're done with the quiz. I'm going to go make sure I got everything done. Uh, JPEG file, JPEG file, JPEG file. What says max velocity? OK, this is a bonus question. And then we got the two um, quiz files. So I'll submit the quiz. OK, so 5 out of 30. Those aren't graded. I got that one right. OK, I'm going to get the bonus right. It's correct. Uh, and then finally, those aren't graded yet either. But uh, your professor will grade those and give you a perfect score on this quiz. So the reason I did this is so, just so you can see how I think through the problems, and hopefully that helps you think through problems a little better as you try to solve uh, these type of things using programming or MATLAB.